So welcome back to Chockablog video blogs, video blog number four, and the last in the series, in in this series anyway. If you've followed the blogs to date, then you'll know the following information. You'll have understood all of these areas of, of explanation. And what they show is that Scotland has a nine billion onshore deficit gap to the rest of the UK because Scotland spends more money because we're an expensive country to run that offshore that is oil and gas revenues sometimes more than fill that gap such that sometimes Scotland is a net contributor sometimes a net beneficiary in the 1980s we were a massive net contributor as we look forward we're going to be a significant net beneficiary because oil and gas revenues have declined so far that a lot of that 9 billion deficit gap is exposed roughly 8 billion pounds the white paper was clearly very optimistic in its in its oil and gas forecasts and the outlook for oil and gas is bleak even if oil prices recover so to expect oil and gas to come to our rescue is is optimistic and naive in the extreme if we were to be fully fiscally autonomous that is if we were to pay our way within the uk the definition of fiscal autonomy we would need to do some combination of raising taxes and reducing public spending to get that eight billion we raise 50 billion in taxes at the moment so we need to increase our taxes by 16 percent or if we were to do it on the cost side we need to reduce our spending by 14 percent relative to the rest of the uk because that's just being fiscally autonomous getting us back to the same level of deficit as a percent of gdp as the rest of the UK. So that's not eliminating the deficit. It's not saying we're not allowed to run a deficit. It's just saying if we were to be fiscally autonomous, we'd need to run the same level of deficit as the rest of the UK. If we think we can raise that 16% just by economic growth, we need to be incredibly optimistic. The white paper itself chose the illustrative example of 3.8% cumulative growth over a 30 year period as an illustration of the dividend of the benefit of having independence. 3.8% over 30 years and we're looking for 16%. So at that rate it would take over 100 years to fill the deficit gap just by economic growth. So that's what we've shown so far. Now the question is do we need to close that deficit gap? And here we get into some tricky territory because now we're going to inevitably be sort of moving away from fiscal autonomy and thinking more about potentially independence. And if we start thinking about independence, we have to think about currency, we have to think about business flight, we have to think about the transition costs, we have to think about so many more things. But I think it's worth just drawing a few EU comparisons just to help us think about that scale of deficit that are fiscally autonomous or independent without any of the other costs of independence Scotland would be incurring. So this data I'm going to compare to EU net lending borrowing data because that's how the EU reports the data. That's basically the same as deficit or surplus assuming you are funding your deficit or surplus through lending or borrowing which is what most people do unless they've got some enormous assets to sell. So this data looks at the history for the United Kingdom as a whole, based on EU data, and Scotland's position as a percentage of GDP, what the net borrowing and lending would be. So in Scotland's case, this is just the deficit, would be net borrowing. And as we can see, we track pretty closely, but we have started diverging in recent years. And of course, that's because oil and gas means that deficit gap is becoming exposed. So if we took out oil and gas, if you think oil is just a bonus, the dotted line is what Scotland's deficit as a percent of GDP would have been historically under the current tax and spend policies as we run within the United Kingdom. Historically, this would have been the level of deficit that we would have run. Now, the question is, does that matter? How, you know, how scary is that number? Well, let's put it in the context. I'm going to flick back and forward so you can just keep an eye on the red lines and the black line, putting it in context of other EU countries. And so what you see, Norway runs a massive surplus. I confess I haven't dug in to fully understand how the uh, oil fund contributes to that. I think that's before oil fund um, revenues and dividends but I'm honestly not sure anyway Norway runs a significant surplus um, if we just scale the graph a bit more so we can really look at it so I'm taking Norway off now just so that we can look into the detail a bit more I'll leave this graph here so that you can pause it and have a look for yourselves but let's just observe if you believe oil is just a bonus you believe this dotted red line is fine and okay Slovakia Turkey briefly 
uh, Ireland briefly, Slovenia briefly have run worse deficits. But over the last 15 years, Scotland would definitely be the poor man of Europe without oil and gas. But of course, we have oil and gas, and that's the thick red line. So, you know, not great. Worse than the UK over this period, in line with the UK, better than the UK, better than the UK, but now diverging away and being worse than the UK as a result of the declining oil and gas revenues. If you've followed the blog posts so far, you will understand all of that. Now, the EU data I've presented does include some forecasts, so we need to be slightly careful really to kind of stop our thinking here in 2015. And you can see, by the way, the UK as a t in total is not doing great. You know, as often pointed out, uh, the rate of improvement is looking reasonably good. And that's obviously something that's been sort of talked about a lot politically. Uh, but Scotland, were we fiscally autonomous, would be doing a lot worse because of that onshore deficit gap. So let's look at where that would put Scotland in the context of other EU countries. So here's the graph. Just that year of 2015, there's Norway running its big surplus. Germany runs a surplus. Oh, I should say, it's worth pointing out on this graph. The UK did run a surplus in 99, 2000 and 2001. People tend to forget that when they say everyone always runs a, a deficit. But yes, Germany's running a surplus, as is Switzerland, as just is Iceland. Uh, and then we run across Ireland after being in massive deficit. Huge austerity measures is now running a, a, a relatively modest deficit. The UK is pretty bad. And Scotland, if we take the IFS forecast, and we've covered that in previous blogs, would really be looking awfully bad. So again, let me just rescale the graph, taking Norway off just so we can read the detail a bit more easily. That 3% number, that is the EC Stability and Growth Pact definition of an exit uh, sorry, an excessive deficit. So that is the excessive deficit threshold as defined by the EC. Now, you know, France, Macedonia, the United Kingdom, very similar to Spain, are running what the EC defined to be excessive deficit at the moment. But a fiscally autonomous Scotland, given the decline in oil and gas revenue, would be out here, 8.6% deficit. I mean, right now, today, it's 8.4%, I think. Uh, so, you know, Scot sorry, 8.1% it is today. So Scotland's deficit would be within the context of EU benchmarks, an appallingly bad deficit. That is unsustainable. So were we to be independent, this is where we would start from. Now, then you can ask the question, what would we do about currency? And what would the cost of setting up a currency, the transition costs, the setup costs, the business flight, all these other things which you would have to put against what you believe an independent Scotland could achieve that it can't achieve within the UK. And that's the point at which I personally at least will sort of exit this debate and suggest oh, that's the last slide I've got. OK, so I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to come back so that we can see the bigger picture. We've covered all of this. For now, my work is done. I hope people find this interesting. I will try and get this uploaded in a way that people can navigate it themselves. Please visit Jocker blog. Follow me on Twitter, Keveridge on Twitter. I hope this has been helpful.